Well, good afternoon, y'all. Michael here, Shark City Yacker. I'm out today. I, uh, it's the afternoon. I'm gonna be fishing here for a few hours till about sunset. Um, and believe it or not, target species today is not bass. I'm gonna make a real concerted effort this season to uh, really uh, broaden you know the fishing experience for myself and for you watching um, at home or wherever you're watching at right now to really uh, you know catch just other fish you know so today it's all about walleye and crappie I was out here fishing yesterday and uh, almost hit my limit with uh, walleye and so uh family members were like hey let's, let's go have a fry so i said all right why not let me uh try and get out here and catch just a couple more enough to so everybody has a you know good sized portion and so i'm gonna try and get a couple walleye maybe just two i generally like to keep them in the uh 18 to 20 inch range uh to me i find those are the best eating size and anything bigger than that i normally just try to throw back um to keep the species going and all of that stuff. I don't normally harvest fish uh, often through the year. Only real species I will be crappie, walleye, and salmon, of course, on Great Lakes. I mean, that's about it. So uh, I'm out right now on the troll, and uh, it's windy as hell. So it's going to be a challenge to, I don't know how this audio is going to sound, but it's going to be a challenge to keep the speed. Uh, where I need it to be. And, uh, you know, the important part about trolling is that you really, when you're doing this and you have your fish finder and hopefully it has, uh, it hopefully has the option where you can um, set up trails. And those are uh, really important, man. So I was out here trolling yesterday and have a good trail of where I caught them. I'm gonna go back over that in a minute, but I wanted to try a different uh, kind of run through in, in a different area, uh, give it a couple passes, just to see what uh, might turn out over here. And if I can get these walleye in, then uh, if I can get the walleye in, then I'll uh, move on to some crappie. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how that's gonna go because with the uh, wind, the way it's kicking, it's gonna be hard to stay on top of a, wall, of a uh, crappie. Of course, with trolling, speed and depth is everything. Now, I don't have line counter reels, which is ideal for trolling, obviously. If you're flatlining, you wanna know how much line you have out so that if you get a strike, you can replicate that, everything, the same speed, the same depth. So, I uh, kinda have a system, it's more of a mental thing. I don't know if I can really explain how I know how far to set my lines out right now. You know, another thing when I'm trolling, whether it's salmon or in this case, walleye, um, don't be afraid to change colors, man. If I'm trolling every 15 minutes, I'll take one of the rods, pull it up and uh, change the color until you find the one that they want. Uh, you know, trying to force them to eat, eat whatever presentation you have, whatever color, it's just really not as productive. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay at a certain depth. I'm actually following through my Navionics uh, uh, mapping the channel because it's going to get shallow but I'm staying in this channel right where it's 20 and 20 and better feet so I get these lures up over deeper water there we go there we go about time we got one down there. I knew that purple one was going to work. Where's he at? Come on. Putting up a fight.
Oh man, he's just barely hooked. He's just barely hooked. Come here. Oh, come on. Oh, it's a big one too. Come on. Come on. Just barely hooked. Uh, oh man, he's a monster. Feels like it anyway. Or maybe it's just because he's following. No, he's just at the corner of his mouth. Oh. Come here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my God, I gotta get this in. I gotta get this in. Oh my God. Jesus, this guy will not stop. Come on. Oh God. What a, br this, this fish is thick. Oh, come on. Jeez. <laughs> I can't believe what's happening right now. This fish will not let me net him. Oh, I got him. Oh, I got him. Oh, man. What a big one. That is fat. That is fat. Oh, wow. All right, let's get that out there. Let me put him in the water for a second. Oh, it's a... That fish is, is heavy. That fish is heavy for sure. Purple Desert never fails either, man. Really good color when you're looking for something more of a natural, natural uh, presentation. We got three, four, two. It's a healthy fish. Let's get a length on it real quick. Looking at twenty, twenty and a half. So it's a keeper, it's a eater. I'm gonna go ahead and keep them. This will go well with the uh, other ones I got. So one thing I noticed for sure was this is the first angle that I went directly into wind. I've had a lot more, uh, a lot better boat control, especially controlling my speed on the troll, which 1.5 to 1.7 is the magic number the last two days. So while I'm trolling and waiting, hopefully to get another bite, let me let me tell you how clutch, how clutch that catch was, or I should say how important it was uh, to change out the hooks that allowed me to catch that fish. You know, the stock uh, hooks that come with these flicker minnows and flicker shads are honestly crap. And because I also use these lures for salmon, salmon really love, really love them when they're on the uh, plug bite. You got to go with a, at least three to four times strong uh, hook. And so I switched these hooks out. And so they are, I believe I, I generally use VMC for a lot of my treble hooks. And um, I believe that's what was on that one, a VMC three or four times strong short shank uh, hook. So you know that fish it, it it didn't it didn't hit the lure the way it looked the way it was hooked it didn't look like it hit it out of hunger it looked like it was a reaction bite uh just because the tail hook was lodged into its head so i'm guessing the fish came up made a pass that it swiped it and got hooked in the process and had i not had that sharp hook and uh by no means this is a plug for being vmc i mean just you want to have a whatever hooks you're into just make sure they're sharp man uh because if, if that hook wasn't as sharp as it is that fish probably would shuck it out of his uh, shook the hook out of his head and wouldn't have uh dinner for later uh, we're gonna turn around and when you're turning while you're tro trolling especially out of a kayak you got to really make a big a big loop otherwise your lines will get tangled behind you so kind of want to make a gradual turn gradual turn gradual turn and you can kind of watch your rod tips to see where the lines are shooting out of. If you see your, whatever side you're turning, if you see the rod 
the rod on the opposite side of the turn line shooting underneath the stern of your kayak, you're going, you're, short, you're turning too sharply. And of course you can get that into your rudder, you know, you can tie up into your other line, it can cut up in your drive if you have a pedal system. So you just want to take it easy when you make your turns, make them wide. And the cool thing about when you turn is when you're turning, one of your lure actually ends up going faster than the other one. And when you straighten out, they kind of balance back out. So it's a, it's a cool way to also get some uh, variation on your presentation. You know, one lure kind of slows down a little bit, the other one speeds up, that could trigger a bite. got swiped at again I mean 54 feet of water and the rod was you can see when the with, with the bait tracking properly you'd see the rod tip just vibrating and it was vibrating vibrating and then it just popped and went back down so that tells me something maybe hit a bait fish in the water or maybe a uh, fish came up and swiped at it you gotta keep, you know watch your rod tips it tells you Really tells you a lot when you see what happens, you know, especially when you know you're not hitting bottom. I mean, I'm, I'm in 40 feet of water trolling. All right, so I know you're watching this, you're probably wondering, what about baits? So I'm using flicker minnows, flicker shads, some of my favorites. You can use uh, shad wraps, I mean, you can use tail dancers, you can use uh, so many other kind of cranks. Um, these are just my preference and my confidence uh, lures for uh, walleye, and uh, especially the flicker minnows. I really, really love their profile. They're real slim and slender, got a nice action. And uh, to me, that's just a confidence bait. I know I can catch them on in, so I prefer that. But whatever lure you choose, um, I think more important, the two important things are color and the size. And between the two, size more is more important than the color. You wanna really try and get your baits to match the forge that these fish are are feeding on and so the flicker minnows i have i know after seeing these fish spit them up um and seeing you know the bait fish in the water the shed here i know what size they are in the three three inch range so my flicker minnows are right around that three three and a half inch range once you get the size right the way i like to do it is i'm trolling two rods is i like to uh, start off with just bright colors um, like in this lake, and I'm sure in many lakes, it's a ton of, there's a ton of uh, forage to feed on, you know? So going with a natural presentation at first, uh, these fish, you know, what, what sticks out about it? So I like to go kind of crazy colors, chartreuses and the greens and the reds and the pinks and uh, all that stuff, troll that to start with. If I don't get bit on those lures, then I'll switch to something more natural. Um, that's kind of how I started here. And it wasn't until I switched over, I, you know, my first couple of lures I started with were bright. The lure I switched to over here was a purple descent color. And uh, I really like purple descent. Right now the sun is starting to go down, um, heading into the evening. And uh, purple descent for me, uh, you know, uh, going into dawn and dusk, really prefer that color, really do like that color. It works really well whether it's on Lake Michigan or inland lakes for walleye. Um, so I switched it and that's what got hit. The other ride I have here with, with, with the bright color, crazy color thing on it, hasn't got tagged yet. Yesterday, it's what caught my fish. So you gotta kind of cycle through these uh, baits. So it'll go back again. If I get another hit on the purple descent, this other ride will get changed out and I'll flip it to a, another natural color. Now, as you're watching this and you hear me look at my fish finder and, you know, there's walleye, there's walleye. How, how do I know the walleye? Well, I'm kind of looking at everything in totality here, right? It's spring. Walleye have already spawned. That They've been spawned. I don't know necessarily in this lake if they naturally pr reproduce. But you got the water temps at 64. It's springtime. All these bass right now are going to be up way closer to shallow water. So to see fish that are not bait fish that are suspended, uh, the odds are highly, highly that uh, they're gonna be walleye, potentially white bass, um, 
but you can always tell the difference between crappie schools. So it's not crappie. When you see in the, just individual markings, two or three together suspended, and uh, they're bigger dots, really good chance that you know they're walleye. And you have to kind of know the body of water you're on to know all the species in it and kind of tell uh, you know what's all in there. It allows you to kind of pick them apart and say, okay, I know what this should be. And, and these are just really educated guesses, you know, I could be completely wrong, but just based off of, of everything, like here's another one. This to me, I know you guys can't see it, but a nice long mark and about 17 feet of water should be a walleye. Another one on. There we go. Oh, he slammed it. Oh. Dropping this one in. Oh, he woke up. Bring this over here, slammed it. Look at that, yesterday they wanted the bright colors, today, natural. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Feisty, these guys fight hard around here. Oh, I got him look good, he ain't going anywhere. There we go. Oh. Oh. Make sure we're legal. Oh, I got slimed. Oh, I got slimed. Oh, this is great. Oh. I'm gonna smell like fish for the next week. Oh, you deserve to get eight. You deserve you deserve to get eight, bro. God. Another 20 incher. Oh. I should measure him. William, why not? Look at those teeth. Two not. Two nine eight, come on. Another solid eater. So we're gonna go ahead and get them up on the uh, string over here. Well, this stringer is worn out. I need a new one. I just had an epic fail. That's one. Look at this. It just popped at the at, at the, the ring. This is the worst stringer ever in life, man.